Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to this video of problem solving where we're going to be focusing on pin code questions. So these questions have cropped up a lot in the very past few years in the BMAT, so really watch out for them and try and practice your techniques for them. Pin code questions often require trial and error, and there's no real other way around them, but often you can use algebra and other mathematical methods. We will go through four examples which represent the most common pin code questions that have come up. Pin code questions have tended to come up more often in recent years, as I just mentioned, so aim to sharpen your skills on them. Let's have a look at some examples now. Okay, so I want you to pause the video now and try and have a go. One tip I'd give is that you can use algebra to answer this question, okay? Okay, so the answer you should have gotten here is C, three, okay? So, let's go through how to answer this question step by step. Now, the method I used, you may not have used, and you might have used trial and error, but this is what I recommend. So whenever you can, always use algebra. So I've assigned each digit a letter. So we have A representing number one, B to represent the second digit, C to represent the third digit, four to represent the fifth, and E to represent the fifth, okay? So we are told that the second digit is a square of the first digit. This means B, representing the second digit, is A squared, the first digit. We're also told the sum of the first digit and the third digit is 10. Therefore, a plus c equals 10, and we can rewrite this as c equals 10 minus a. We're then told the fourth digit is one more than the first digit. The fourth digit is d, so d equals a plus 1. And then we know that the sum of the third and the fifth digit equals 14. So we write this as c plus e equals 14. Again, rearrange it so we have e on one side. e equals 14 minus c. Now what's really useful here is that we know what c is. We've said that c equals 10 minus a. So why don't we put this into the equation for e to try and reduce the number of variables we have. We end up with e equals 14 minus brackets 10 minus a. Okay? And we're also told the sum of all the digits is 30. So a plus b, plus c, plus d, plus e equals 30. So what's really good here is that b, c, d and e are all expressed in terms of a. So we can form a quadratic equation using these terms. So we have a obviously to represent a, a squared to represent b, 10 minus a to represent c, a plus 1 to represent d, and 14 minus brackets 10 minus a to represent e. Okay, and they all add up to 30. So firstly, we can cancel out plus 10 minus a and minus 10 minus a. Okay, because yeah, if you just put them together, it will equal zero. So we cross those two out and we're left with a plus a squared plus a plus 1 plus 14 equals 30. So now we solve it as we would with any quadratic equation. Okay, so we make sure we expand a plus 1 and that would give us a squared plus 2a plus 15 equals 30. And now we bring the 30 over to the left hand side. So the right hand side equals 0. So we get a squared plus 2a minus 15 equals 0. And then we form our quadratic equation. Okay, a plus 5, a minus 3 equals 0. Now the two solutions here are a equals 3 and a equals minus 5. But a pin code cannot have negative numbers. So the accepted first digit is 3. Therefore, our answer is C, 3. OK? Have a go at this question now by pausing the video. OK, so the answer you should have gotten here is C. So for these questions, always try and use algebra to achieve the correct answer. It can often take very long, though, so trial and error can work. So. First off, we write out the information that we know. We know that the second digit is 8. We know that the second and fourth and sixth digits must add up to a multiple of 10. Because 
the three di two digit numbers add up to 1610. So, whatever they add up to has to end in 0. So let's call x the fourth digit, okay? And let's call y the sixth digit. Since we know the second digit is 8, and we know that the second digit plus fourth digit plus sixth digit has to add up to a multiple of 10, let's form this equation. 8 plus x plus y equals 10. Now, what's wrong with this equation? First of all, x and y have to be 1. There's no real alternative because there can't be any negative numbers. And we know that each number is different because it says it contains six different digits. So 8 plus x plus y can't equal 10. So instead of 10, we can try another multiple of 10. For example, 20. Okay, because this obviously doesn't work. So let's try 8 plus x plus y equals 20. Now this is a lot more plausible because we have x plus y equaling 12. Okay, so x plus y equals 12 works. So now we just need to think of all the different combinations that can come up. Okay, so they can either be 5 and 7, 3 and 9, 4 and 8, and the last one we can't have 6 or 6. We also can't have 4 and 8 either because we already have 8 as a second digit. So we cross out 4 and 8. We also cross out 6 and 6. Yeah? So this moment in time, we don't really know whether it could be 5 and 7 or 3 or 9. 3 and 9. So let's try and find out what the other digits are. Okay? We're also told that the third and sixth digit has to be a multiple of 10 since when it is as two three digit numbers, they add up to 170. So the sixth digit is y, as we've already established, and let's call the third di digit z. So let's try z plus y equals 10, okay, since the third and sixth digit must add up to a multiple of 10. So we said z plus y equals 10, and we know y can't be 5, because this would mean that z would be 5, which is not possible, as all numbers have to be different, okay? So that rules out 5 for us. Why can't be 7 or 9 either? This is because the last digit is a prime number less than 5. That leaves us with one option only. Y has to equal 3. Okay? So just before, where we were doing x plus y equals 20, we said x and y can be 5, 7, 3, or 9. But now we ruled out 5 because 5 plus z can't equal 10. We ruled out 7 and 9 because it has to be a prime number, less than 5, and that's left us with 3, which clears up a lot of things, okay? So if y equals 3 and z plus y equals 10, we know z equals 7. If x plus y equals 12, then x plus 3 will equal 12. Therefore, x will equal 9. So now we know the sixth digit, third digit, and fourth digit, okay? All that's left now is plugging them in to the original setup. So we have 8 as the second, 7 as the third, 9 as the fourth, and 3 as the last one. But we still don't know what the first digit is, okay? Well, this should be slightly easier. To find the first and fifth digit, we need to use the information that the three numbers add up to 170. Well, we know one of these numbers is going to be 79, okay? So I've set something up here. So I've got i representing the first number, 8 plus 79 plus j, which is representing the fifth number, 3, equals 170. So if I rearrange that, I know that the two numbers have to add up to 91. Okay? And i and j actually have to add up to 8, since 8 plus 3 equals 11. So we have two options here, okay? I could be 2 and j could be 6, or I could be 6 and j could be 2. So to find out which scenario it is, we really just have to use trial and error. So with option 1, we have 287963. This adds up to 1250 with the three large numbers. This is not what we require. We require it to add to 1610. If we try and do 667 plus 923, that gives us what we need, 1610. Therefore, we know that this is the final correct sequence. The first number is 6 and the fourth digit is 9, and they add up to 15. Therefore, 
The answer is C, 15. Okay? I hope that makes sense. So that, that was a really tough example. We're going to look up a few more examples in the next video. Have a go. Thank you for watching this free BMAT tutorial from Medic Mind. To unlock the rest of the 100 tutorials and all 8 ebooks, click here now.